And you hear, in Christ, in Christ, mm -hmm. in Christ, in Christ. What do you think mentally when you think in Christ? And I'm, I'm actually literally trying to draw some ideas out here. That's why uh, for my, my little ones that I teach on uh, Wednesdays at Cadets, I got to thinking, because I had been teaching for a, a couple of months about things that we have in Jesus, because if you don't know, you're going to set about in your own flesh to try to get them. If you don't know what you got in Christ. And uh, I was thinking on how I could teach more effectively. And I thought, you know, to, to little kids, they don't understand the phrase, in Christ. And so, uh, God literally gave me an idea. And I took out a marker and I started drawing on the board a house. And I said, what are some things that you have in a house? People name stuff like a TV, really good ideas too, like heat, you know, air conditioning, food. And we filled up the house, top, bottom, I don't think we made a basement, but we made, you know, extra rooms because of all the stuff. And I said, okay. And then lastly, I started drawing people, and I drew each one in the class, and I named them. I said, this is you in the house. What do you have in the house? And I went around the whole room again, and they pointed out what they already told me on the board. And so I likened that to Christ. These are the things that we have in Christ. And, you know, I mean, here's a list, if you want a list of stuff we got in Christ, you know. These are sanctification, our righteousness, you know, our holiness, our peace, our joy. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. And, and can, let me interrupt you. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> in Jesus' words, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are mm -hmm. heavy laden. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I always like to stop here and talk about laboring and heavy laden. Labor is work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being heavy laden, I think about this ship that is laden down so heavy that if one little wave out of the ordinary comes along, it's gone. You know, and people get that way in their life, and I've been there. Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When he said, I will give you rest, the only way to find that rest is to know he gave it to you and what he gave to you and what you are in Christ. And if you don't know that, then you, you some laboring, you're a laboring fool, man. And I'm not saying that you're not going to do something. You know, throughout the course of the week, I probably have the opportunity to talk to 20 to 30 people during the course of a week mm -hmm. about Jesus Christ. Man. But I didn't write on my schedule 8 p.m. tonight. I'm going to work on, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it for three hours. Everybody that walked by me, said to said, because unless a man be drawn, mm -hmm. that's working out the flesh. I mean, if, if, if God doesn't start dealing with you, I could beat you up and not make a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's that's like um, uh, a Jewish farmer told somebody. <coughs> I heard the story, part of it anyway. He said, "You'd never take seed and just throw it up under any thorn bush or briar patch. You would, you would cultivate the land, right? You yeah. prepare the land and everything, make sure that you know if nothing was going to eat up your crops and all that." And, and uh, strategically place every seed, you know, so it was accounted for. You wouldn't just throw stuff out there, you know, not to be, uh, or, con you know, contradict the scripture that says, you know, scatter your seed abroad, but, uh, you know, don't do it foolishly. Uh, that's probably more in context of, you know, don't count your dollars, just I'll supply your need, you go and do the work, you know, don't worry. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, let, let me give you this example. Back in my day, when I was totally gone out there and all that stuff, I got a letter from a lady who gave me these things I needed to do. I need to get my life right. <coughs> I need to get in church. Mm -hmm. I need to do all these things right here. Now, God broke me. And I didn't, I'll tell you, man, I, I, there was, for some reason, I knew what I needed wasn't in the church. It was in God. 
-hmm. He fixed me all up and all that stuff. I've never gone back to that lady. Now it's been six, seven years and said, oh, thank you for giving me that list of dudes. <laughs> Yeah. That Which is really, good stuff. Good that, it delivered me. It, I mean, just thank you so much. That, you know, the power of God yeah. is what delivers us, man. But most Christians have the solution, though, to correcting your life. James, you need to get your act together. You both tired of watching you walk around try hard. Here. And, and, and uh, you need to read the scripture more. Yeah. You need to set aside more time for prayer. You need to. Uh, Come to church on Wednesday night. Don't forget about those green seeds. Right. If you, if you love God like I love God, you wouldn't have that problem. That's right. <laughs> like people say that. Wow. You need to become one of the auxiliary ones in the church. You yeah, right. In the choir. <laughs> now you all laid people. down, you know. Yeah, uh, and, and, and then there's. Uh, and they got to put on some good clothes to go right. to church. Then you have the breakfast. The, the, the pastor have a breakfast every Saturday morning at 7 o'clock. <laughs> now, all that's going to do what? Well. That's going to make help. me look better in their eyes. It's going to help that flesh. Yeah. But it ain't going to do a thing for my salvation. But people spend a that's lot of time I'm offering up those types of suggestions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they find it very helpful for themselves. But you need to contribute more to the church so they can do what God is talking about. Yeah. Uh, because you know, with people, and then we need a nursery because okay. the kids are disturbing us. Oh, mm -hmm. The kids over here eating in the middle of our yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I let no man judge me and me to drink <laughs> on a Saturday or a holy day, but I need ketchup. We might have is there ketchup no, in the bag? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a special order. <laughs> but that's what uh, most yeah, Christians well, today, oh, modern day Christians, is they already have their list of things that make you a better person. Mm -hmm. Now, where did they get that from? They did not have that in their mind the moment they, they and the Christ. minute after they got saved. Okay. Now, a minute and one second after, there was somebody telling Tell them, them in some back should, room. Yeah. Thank you. How they should. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They need some napkins. We got napkins. Oh, uh, there's some time in the bag. If you're not careful, you may have more red letters on that page. Than <laughs> than <laughs> that but, uh, you want some ketchup? But that's the only <laughs> problem that today's Christians have. They, they did, uh, the, what, God gave them 10 commandments, and they got 351 that you, and, and, and we do the same thing. Well, as soon as we get organized, we start setting up a bunch of rules as to how to serve Christ mm -hmm. better. <laughs> if, 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 if I were to say to you, James, you have to stop sinning, and you looked at me <coughs> completely and totally clueless and said, okay, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. What do I do, Byron? Then I have to start thinking. No, you already got your list to go. Well, you, quit doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you already got your list. Quit doing yeah, these are things, two, yeah, yeah, you already got, yeah, cause, Number three. Because you haven't. I'm not the first person that you correct them. They, I mean, in, in the church, you are the person that people go to when they for correction. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, the 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 amazing thing about it is, it's written all through the Bible how to overcome. Mm -hmm. That's by placing your faith in Jesus. You would, you know. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the power of their testimony. Man. But that that faith mm -hmm. in that blood of the Lamb, and that's that's how you get past, you get past <laughs> all of your obstacles in life. You, yeah, you become empowered to do things that you didn't have on your list today to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't wake up that morning, Lee. You can you can remember this. I didn't wake up that one morning and decide, okay, when I walk into the shower. I'm going to get rid of my anger. <coughs> when I step out, it's going to be gone. You remember that day? Yes. I called you on the phone, didn't you? Sure did. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't on my list. Mm -hmm. To get rid of your anger. You you were comfortable with your anger. But right? let me tell you what was on my list. God, help me. If you don't help me, I can't help myself. Mm -hmm. You know, that some of the most wondrous times in my life 
are from the, that helpless position. Mm -hmm. Lord, I cannot do this. But that's when you're at your most vulnerable, and that's when you are. <coughs> that's when you can use you the most. Right, and you're yeah. more open to really hearing what God has to say when you are at the most vulnerable, when you cannot. When there's no more self involved. <coughs> when you give up that self, I, I can't do this. When you become pitiful. Yeah. You know, the, the what was that? It's pitiful. <laughs> what was that little prayer that, uh, you know, the, the Pharisee basically prayed and said, God, just I'm thankful I'm not like them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then this one, he just fell on the ground and prostrated himself. Yeah. He said, I'm a sinner. Just forgive me. And who got the prize? Uh, exactly. And that is so contrary, contrary to our flesh, contrary mm -hmm. to our thinking, and contrary to our social condition. <laughs> Man, you got to be tough. The church teaching and all that. Yeah, yeah how we're raised. It's you know, totally opposite to church. You a man, James. You gotta be. You gotta be tough. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. That's just because everybody's trying to tell, get you to look better in their eyes. Mm -hmm. God doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He's gonna, he gonna change you himself. Right. Mm -hmm. For three hundred and sixty-four days, it's been okay. God, good morning. I'm here. Thank you. Now, what can I do to help you? Can I do anything? God says, no. Okay, let me rethink this. The next morning, you get up. Okay, God. See, I'm adding this. You know, I've changed this. Can I help you now? You know, all the way through until the one day, I just I completely give up. And all of a sudden, it all works out. I mean, how many times does that happen? You know? We talked about that so many times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took me a month to get to the, took me a month to get to the point mm -hmm. that I needed God. And when I needed him for the solution, after I couldn't figure it out after a month, there it was. He had to do that waiting all the time. <coughs> he just asked him. <laughs> Humble yourself before. It is so difficult yeah. not to be us. Not to be human. Yeah. Pride is a sin. Pridefulness is what keeps us from getting a lot of things accomplished in our daily walk with God. Because we're so prideful. But James, I am a good guy. I agree. You can do it. <laughs> but it ain't got nothing to do with, with your salvation. You being good. Your goodness is about human, at the mm -hmm. human aspect of it. Yeah. Humanity and and, and being uh being being a uh, uh, popular before man. Mm -hmm. That's what your goodness is. Now you can get your reward as a result of that also. But that's all you're going to get. Yeah. Right. Pat on the back. Uh, oh, he give you a trophy. <laughs> <coughs> Name you the man of the year. Get your key to the city. Uh huh. Key to the styrofoam key to the city. Yeah. Yeah, you can have all of that. But that's not going to get you any salvation. 